How not to feel salesy when posting on social media about your business. So to introduce this topic, first of all, you might be wondering, well, do we even need to post on social media about our business, about our services? Wouldn't it be nice if people just discovered us uh, somehow, word of mouth, and then decide to work with us? Wouldn't it be great to not have to post at all on social media? And I think that is a huge missed opportunity. Uh, if you think of social media simply, which it is, it's simply a way to keep up with the updates of the people and the brands that are important to you. That's why we serve social media, that and to be entertained, right? But we're, we're doing it to keep up with, you know, updates of friends, colleagues, family, and companies and organizations that we care about, causes that matter to us. That's why people, lots and lots of people serve social media. And so you might be saying, well, George, I have tried to post about my services on social media. And every time I post about it, you know, it doesn't get any engagement or barely any engagement compared to when I post a picture of my you know, cat or dog or just simply a picture of myself, then I get tons of likes and engagement. Why is that, George? I mean, is it people don't like my business? No, it's not that. It's because your friends are much more likely to connect with your personal updates than about your business because most of your friends are not your ideal client, right? I mean, go and take a look at, like go to your Facebook friends, for example, and scroll through them like, which one of these people are really my ideal clients? Very few of them are. Most of them don't even have the problem that you like to help people solve or the goal that you like to help people achieve. Now, there's a problem. Maybe you say, well, my thing helps everyone. <laughs> okay, that's a separate video that we need to talk about. Uh, no, your thing does not help everyone. Not uh, Sure, your thing might help everyone, but not in the equal amount of impact. There are some people that your thing has way bigger impact than other people who couldn't care less about your modality, methodology, even if they think they, even if you think they need help, they don't think they need help. But some people do think they need help and they are interested in your modality or your method. And they would be way more likely to get benefit from your work. And so those people are your ideal clients and the rest of your friends are not. The rest of your colleagues are not. Now, just because a small minority of your friends are your ideal clients and most are not, doesn't mean you shouldn't post about your services on social media. Because let's say out of your, uh, let's just say you have 300 Facebook friends, right? Out of 300 Facebook friends, I don't know, maybe 15 of them are ideal clients for you, you know, and 285 are not. But out of the 285 who are not ideal clients for you, there's probably... 50 of them who know others who are ideal clients for you. And if you post about your services and business on a regular basis, it not only reminds the 15 that you're still there and when they're ready to work with you, they should contact you because you're, you're their friend. Why wouldn't they? Of course, they would contact you more than somebody else they barely know. And you're also reminding the other 85 or sorry, the other, well, maybe 85, but yeah, probably, let's say, the other, other 85 people who um, have a friend or a family member who need what you have, but the timing has to be right, meaning this is important to say. I, I, I don't emphasize this enough. When you post about your services on social media, we, your friends, remember your services for like the rest of the day, maybe, if, if you're lucky will remember your services. So if, if, like, if I'm your friend and you post about your thing and I don't need your thing, but like I'm talking to my brother later who needs your thing, or I'm talking to another friend who needs your thing the same day, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Let me, uh, let me send you her info, you know, your, your info. But if you post it today on social, and then like five days later, I have a friend talking to me saying that they need this thing that you offer I probably have forgotten about because within the next five days, I have seen so many other social media posts. I've read so many other emails. I've talked to so many other people or messaged with other people. Do you see what I mean? So it is so 
important for you to do it on a regular basis. Now, you might say, George, does that mean I should post on my about my services every five days? Well, that might be that might be a little too often. So let me give you a simple ratio that you can think about. The the good old 80-20 rule uh, is is good for, for application here. So when you post on social media, 80% of the time, or for 80% of your posts, don't try to sell people your services. You know, just in 80% of your posts, make it something that is helpful, inspirational, interesting, um, current. Uh, and some of it, maybe a lot of it is related to your business. Not like, hey, reminder that I sell this thing. No, no, no. It's sort of like you're, you're giving um, educational or inspirational content that helps people understand your field even better. Maybe it helps them understand the root causes of the issues that you help people solve. Or maybe it helps them understand the overall map for if they're here right now and they would like this kind of life or to solve the problem in this kind of way, here's the overall map for how to get there. It's kind of like um, the hero's journey. They are starting out from where they are uh, with a discontent, uh, maybe with a, with, a, uh, you know, with a problem, with a challenge, a war, with a dream. And they want to go from where they are to all the way across the land to the top of the mountain over there. And you understand the whole journey because you have taken people there or you have been there yourself. And you know that, oh, they have to get, they have to understand that there's a, there's a dark forest with some, you know, dangerous creatures in there that they need to be prepared to, uh, to battle or to avoid, you know, and then they'll get into the swamp where there are, you know, alligators that might, <laughs> that might eat them and they need to have proper equipment and to, to traverse the swamp. And then they, they need to, they, then they have to be careful of this giant pit that they want to fall into or whatever. And then finally they get up the mountain and they need to, I mean, they need this kind of gear. They need this kind of skill to be able to get to the top of the mountain. Like you can give them the overall understanding that there's a forest, there's a swamp, there's a giant pit, there's, um, you know, buzzing bees over here that they should probably not anger and <laughs> they need this kind of thing. But you're in your content, you're not gonna go, well, let me explain to you um, the details of the forest and how to, how to develop the skills. I mean, I, I've, you can Google this um, free versus premium content. I have a whole other blog post that gives you a better understanding of the, the difference between how-to content, which should be courses and in your coaching and in your services. Don't give away the how-to for free. So George, you do do that all the time. You give us how-to for free. Well, I have a certain size of an audience and I'm, I'm, at, a, I'm, I'm at a very lucky point in my business now where I'm kind of batting away prospective clients because there I get too many inquiries to work with me and I can't um, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm already, I've already had enough of my network to refer people to because they're part of my client program and I refer people to them, but I'm already at a lucky stage where I have a large enough audience where I can post some how to stuff for free because, you know, I have enough, uh, I have enough business, but if you don't already have a waiting list and you say, I would love some more clients, George, do not post how to stuff for free, except once in a while, if you think some kind of how-to thing that you're going to post will probably go viral on YouTube or something like that, where it's like, okay, this is, this is perfect for my ideal client. This is not too long of a how-to video or a blog post. And this is probably going to be great for keywords. And then, okay, then once in a while, you can do that. But most of your content should just be, you know, anyway, you can, you can Google free versus premium content. Google it, and you'll find my article about that. But basically. 80% um, of your content, your free is free content. 80% uh, of your content is free content that aims to inspire, educate people about the overall path from where they are to where you are good at taking people. Educate people generally. Tell stories that give them hope, that um, give them the optimism that it's possible, and uh, give them the better understanding of the root causes, so that by the time they work with you. 
then they understand that, oh yes, I've heard about, you've told me about the forest before. Oh yes, I, you've also mentioned the swamp. Oh yes, I understand I need to develop these skills to go up a mountain. I understand that you're the person to help me with that, right? So 80% of the time, post content that isn't directly selling. It's not, maybe you, can, you might mention your services every now and then, but it's really more for like, they should feel satisfied after watching that video or, or um, you know, reading that blog post. Now you might say, George, isn't this very video a how-to video? No, uh, if you think this is a how-to video, wait until you take my courses. It's way more detailed and like step-by-step. -step. This, is, this is to me a very generic free content that's very overview. Like it, it doesn't tell you how to get through the swamp and, and the, how to battle the monsters in the forest. This tells you that there's a forest under the swamp, right? So that's, I'm demonstrating this to you right now. So 80% so of your content, let it be educational and inspirational, entertaining or engaging in whatever way feels natural and authentic to you, um, which by the way, doesn't mean you have to talk fast like me. Yes, talking fast tends to be more engaging and entertaining on video, but there are people that can talk very slowly that is also quite engaging. So it's, it's your style. It's your style, your authentic style, where you feel alive and connected to, to the person, whether it's in writing or on video or it's, okay, so 80% of your posts should be that kind of educational uplift, that kind of content. And then 20% of your posts, let it be directly announcing or reminding your audience about your services, about your products, your, you know, your programs, et cetera. So let's say you make 10 posts every two weeks and just you know, on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere. Every two weeks, you make about 10 posts, let's say. Well, eight of those posts, right, are, or let's, let's even be, be more, uh, more clear. Every week, you make five posts on social media. Four of those posts, 80%, four of those posts are educational, uplifting. And then one of those posts is, hey, I want to remind you about this is the service I provide. I love providing, et cetera. Now, you might say, George, back to the original question, how do I not feel salesy when I do that 20% of the sales-related posts where I'm announcing? This is how you do it. You post as if you're talking to friends, not as if you are in a commercial that's <laughs> trying to like convince strangers who couldn't care less about you to suddenly fall in love and work with you. And like, I see so much of this. It's like, it's, you know, marketing. Well, let me say this authentic marketing is not about trying to get strangers to come and sleep with you. Right? Authentic marketing is building genuine friendships at scale where people feel like they know you, they feel like they trust you, they feel like you care because you do. And how do you care? How do you demonstrate that you care? Through your consistent content, right? That's how, that's how I demonstrate. I mean, you notice I show up every single week, don't I? except for the um, 10 weeks in a year when, I'm, when, I, when I have you know, a sabbatical, I like, take 10 tiny sabbaticals a year or weeks where I don't necessarily create content. Um, but most of the year you show me, you see me week after week after week, why? Because I care. I care about two people. I care about you and I care about me. I show up with content because I genuinely hope that this gives you more hope and optimism and energy and uh, possibility that you can and help you see your potential, right? And help you take overall, you know, understanding of what the steps are to get there. I also care about me, meaning I care about the, what I call creativity fitness, to stay fit creatively, to keep showing up week after week, because I know it's good for my brain. It's good for my field. It's good for my understanding of, uh, of, of what I do and kind of get smarter in that way. Good for my communication skills, et cetera. So, um, 80% of your posts, let it be content only, no selling. 20% of your posts, let it be selling. And then in the selling posts, talk as if you're talking to friends, not as if you're trying to get people who don't care about you to suddenly trust you and buy from you, because that's a tall order and you have to use a lot of fancy persuasion techniques and but really charming storytelling. So that I don't know who I am, but wow, this is really interesting to read, or this is really interesting to watch. 
you can do that if you wish to, if that feels authentic and energizing to you. To me, I'm too lazy to do that. I would rather build uh, know, like, and trust over time with consistent content, knowing that it's a service to humanity and it's a service to my creativity. And over time, as I build know, like, and trust, then of course, the 20% that you see from me where I sell you something, you'll, I, I have the privilege of your attention right? Because you feel like you trust me at this, by this point. So it's like, okay, well, I trust yours. So I'm willing to at least take a look at what he's trying to sell me, even though I don't like spending money, but I'm going to willing to take a look and maybe I want to spend money with George. I don't know. Let me take a look. I, but it's like, if it's a stranger, you wouldn't take a look and you're like, oh, someone trying to sell to me again. I don't want to spend money. So I'm, I'm not, I'm going to ignore that advertisement, but it's with someone you trust, a content creator that you see on a, a regular basis, caring through their content, then you're willing to take a look and you're willing to consider it. So same thing with your audience and you. When you sell in that 20% of the time, sell as if you're talking to friends, just announcing, hey, friends. I mean, you could literally say, hey, friends, if you want to. I feel like it's a little bit, I don't know. I, 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 I say authentic marketing is like growing friendships at scale, but I am more honest than thinking that that, that we're friends, that we're not really friends, you know, <laughs> there's a feeling of friendliness between us. But, you know, yeah, we're, I, I, when I say, hey, friends, I don't feel like that's authentic to me. So instead of saying, hey, friends, I don't even address you. I just go right into selling to you. I say, pre-launch sale, here's my next course, whatever. Um, or I might say, I'm excited. You know, I might do a little preamble. Hey, I'm excited to announce that this thing is coming up. I care about this offer, the service that I've created because I care about helping these kinds of people or I uh, have worked a long time on this one and I'm ready to bring this out. So this is how I would talk to friends. And this is probably how you would talk to a friend or a group of, imagine you had a group of friends gather to hear your announcement. What would you say? It's like, hey, I'm really excited to share this with you. Um, I care about this. Why do I care about this product or service? And I need your help. If you, uh, have, if you know someone, who could benefit from this product, who would like to buy this thing, probably maybe please share it with them. Or if you feel like you're, you have some feedback for me about how I just described this thing, I would love your feedback too. Now, if you, um, by the way, if, if, if you are uh, looking for like testimonials or examples of how your service is good, you can also say it, say it in that 20% in that of time, hey, um, if you, uh, I, am, I am open to getting some testimonials for the service. So if you're interested in giving me some honest feedback, maybe a testimonial, let me know. And, and I'd be happy to give you a, a really good sample of it. You know, maybe uh, two sessions you know, for free or something. Now, this is for those of you who are really open in your calendar to doing that kind of thing. But those of you further along, you could just simply announce it like to a group of friends, inviting them to share it forward. So I hope this is helpful for how do we not be salesy, but yet we still need to post. And remember I said in the beginning, you know, uh, how many of us wish that uh, we could just sit back, you know, just do our good work with our clients and somehow people discover us through word of mouth, right? Here's the thing. Has that worked for you? Oh, if it's working great for you, if all you're getting all your business through word of mouth, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Obviously, it's working. But for most of us, we're not that lucky. And for most of us, myself included, towards the first couple of years of my business, myself included, I had to learn how to do good marketing. I had to learn authentic marketing. And by doing good marketing, and I always tell you this, see marketing not as a chore, not as, oh, I got to do marketing so that I can get clients. And that's really where I come alive, working with clients. Yeah. Why does it have to be that way? This is your life. Why can't you transform marketing into something that's worth doing in and of itself? How? Mar I, I, I just told you, marketing serves two people. It's you serving your audience as a ministry of content. 80% of the time, you're doing ministry of content, giving them hope, giving them positive feelings, giving them you know, optimism about the, the, the journey you bring them on. You say, oh, that's possible. And that's the overall understanding of it. Your super cause, all that stuff. So your marketing serves humanity, right? Even more than the people who start to work with you, you're serving humanity. And secondly, you're serving your own creativity and you're serving your own 
smarts about your field. Every time you do marketing, you're like, oh, you, you understand yourself better and you understand your field better. So it's a wonderful exercise. Love marketing. Don't hate it. Love marketing because you, you understand it's in service to them and to you. So I hope this is, and by the way, by doing that, you build true credibility. I, I really think of aiming for connection rather than credibility, but by, by showing up consistently, you not only build connection, but you also build credibility because anyway, that's how you get smarter in your field. So I hope this is helpful. I hope this is inspiring. And always, I'm, I, I love seeing your comments below and any kind of quick questions I might be able to uh, quickly answer. So be well, go for it, share of yourself on social media, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.